Hello and welcome to Home Worship. This week we're continuing our series Drinking Deeply and focusing on the Psalms. In a moment I'm going to pray to begin and then I'll hand over to Colin Buchanan who has a message for the kids. Then after that I'll share our Bible reading and a message with you. And after a time of prayer I want to hand over to you to continue this worship time in your own way. Choose some of your own songs, uh, maybe have some time of reflection or discussion. And then when you're ready you can close with the Lord's Prayer. So, shall we begin? Father God, you are our place of safety. When we are in trouble, we can always run to you. When evil comes against us, you are our stronghold. Let your peace fall on your church. Restore our confidence, Lord, in your presence. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So now I'll hand over to Colin, who has a message for the kids and the kids at heart. <laughs> I've just been looking at a picture of one of our sponsored children. His name's Chris. And Chris doesn't live in Australia where I am now. Chris lives in the Philippines, which is a long, long way away. I wonder where you live. I wonder if there's something that God says to people everywhere. Hmm. Well, I found something that is in the Bible, and it's something that God says to everyone. Somebody asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And this is what he said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And with all your strength. That's a lot of alls, isn't it? And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love. It's precious. All right. I thought, hmm, I wonder what's a memory verse from the Bible that's about the greatest commandment, loving God. And I thought of Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And it goes... Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Whistle. Try it. If you can't whistle, go who? Hoo, 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 hoo. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Again, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Whistle. You can do the hoo-hoo again. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. That's a good verse. Trust God and acknowledge him. Do what he says in everything you do. That's how you love the Lord with all your heart. Now, what's a verse from the Bible about loving other people, loving your neighbor? I know. Ephesians. No, let me think. Ephesians, chapter four, Ephesians 4 verse 32. It goes. In the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, God says, Be kind to one another. God says, Be kind to one another. It's only short, you try it. Ready? In the Bible, in Ephesians, Chapter 4, verse 32. God says, be kind to one another. Again, God says, be kind to one another. Now, sometimes people change the beginning. I don't know why. They say, when your Bible's in the freezer. <laughs> do you want to? No, we shouldn't. You Okay, we're going to do it that way. All right, here we go. When your Bible's in the freezer. Chapter 4, verse 32. God says, be kind to one another. God says, be kind to one another. One more. 
God says be kind to one another. Last one. God says be kind to one another. Nice. The two greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. Be kind to one another. And you can be kind to your family and the people very close to you. And you can be kind to your neighbor and the people that you see in your street or at the shops or people at school. And uh, we can be kind to people who don't even live near us. Really, that's why our family were sponsoring Chris. And uh, let me tell you about a special time, something very special that happened. I got to meet Chris. I flew from Australia all the way, a long, long way to the Philippines. And one morning after church, I went down, the bus was outside and someone said, there's someone waiting to meet you on this bus. And I climbed on and there was a seat next to Chris. And he looked at me and said, it's finally you. And I said, it's finally you. It was precious to meet Chris. And it's good to be kind by helping children like Chris. And it's good to be kind because God is kind. And it's good to be kind because being kind makes us feel precious and loved and treasured. Now there's a song about the love of God for us and I think it would be a good one to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Will we pray? I'm going to close my eyes that helps me think about what I'm saying. You can pray with me. Our dear Lord and our God, we praise you because you are the great, high, perfect God. And we want to love you with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our mind and with all our strength, just like you made us to do. And we want to love one another, love our neighbor, near and far, love our family, love those who need our help. Help us to do this, we pray, and be with us in times of trouble and times of hardship to know that Jesus loves us with his strong, strong love. And we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you, Colin. That's a great message for all of us. So now this week, our Bible reading is Psalm 27. Let me read it to you in the NIV translation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. 
Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Our psalm this week is written in a time of trouble, just like our psalm last week. And yet last week in Psalm 69, we heard how the psalm writer was terrified and struggling to hold on to something. This week in Psalm 27, the psalm writer is confident. The Lord is my light and my salvation, he says. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Both Psalm 27 and Psalm 69 were written by David at a time when he was afraid for his life. And yet the response couldn't be more different. In Psalm 69, David is fearful and cowering and doubting himself. But in Psalm 27, he is confident and completely unafraid. In Psalm 69, he was sinking in the deep waters, if you can remember. He was struggling to find something to hold on to. But now, in Psalm 27, he describes how the Lord picks him up and places him high on a solid rock where he is safe and where he is worshipping God in joy and confidence. Listen how, listen how David speaks in verses 2 and 3. And if you've got your Bible at home, I'd really encourage you to pause the video right now, go and grab your Bible and read along with me, because it's so good for you to read these words as I... Um, in your Bible as I read them out to you. So in verses 2 and 3, David describes how come what may, he will not be afraid. He says, When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. In all my life, I've never known what it's like to stand on a battlefield. I have so much gratitude and respect for our soldiers who put their life on the line to go and defend our country. I cannot imagine what it's like to stand in a place of danger like that. The closest I've come to a battlefield would be watching Band of Brothers on video or maybe watching the movie Saving Private Ryan. Have you seen this movie? In some of the opening scenes, we have the Allied soldiers who are arriving in ramp-fronted ramp boats on the beaches of Normandy towards the conclusion of World War II. It's some of the most terrifying and horrific war scenes caught in a feature film. I cannot imagine how terrifying that must be. But King David was a man who did understand what it is to stand on a battlefield. He had been there many times before. At the age of 16, he was anointed as king of Israel, and yet he remained a fugitive until he turned 30. In all of that time, sometimes he was welcomed by King Saul, and sometimes he was running for his life. Then even after he had become king and Saul was gone, King David led the Israelite warriors into battle many, many times. They conquered more territory than the nation of Israel had ever known before and would ever know afterwards. Even later on in his life, he had to flee from the throne from his own son Absalom, who led a rebellion against him. So from this man who talks about the battlefield, we, un we know that he understands what it's like to be in a place of extreme danger. And so why can King David speak so confidently? Well, because he has given his life over to the Lord. 
Is he the most invincible person in all the world? No. Does he have the greatest armies every time he goes out to battle? No. Does he have the greatest warriors? No. But David is confident because his life is in the hands of the Lord. He feels safe because he knows God and he knows that God will protect him and be with him. In verses four and five of our Psalm, David declares that the thing that he wants more than anything in all of the world is to know God. He says, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. In the midst of everything that is going on in his life, David wants nothing more than to be in God's house, to be in his temple, to be in his dwelling, to be in his tent, uh, to be under the shelter of God. And David uses this language and talks about this shelter and house and tent over and over to describe how he just wants to live with God. It's not like some holy priest going to visit a special temple reverently. No, David describes how he wants to live in God's house with him. He wants to be in God's guest room. He wants to have access to God's fridge. He wants to have the rights to use the remotes. More than anything, what David wants is access to God himself. He wants to be able to sit down with God and talk and share his life with God. I wonder, when we come to worship, do we think of it like coming to sit down on the couch with God and have a chat? Or do we think of it like visiting a museum where we have to walk around quietly with our hands behind our back? No, this is not the way David talks about his relationship with God. Certainly we should be reverent and show God the utmost respect. After all, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. And yet we can have a close, intimate relationship with God even. We can talk with him and he can be our friend. We can speak with him as if we are his children, speaking to a father, a loving father, because that's exactly what we are. David goes on in the next verses to talk about his relationship with God, how he wants to seek God and speak to him face to face. In verse four, he said he wants to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. But then read what he says in verses eight and nine. He says, my heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. What does David mean when he says he wants to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and meet God face to face? Well, my research tells me that quite a lot of people have spoken with God. We have Jacob and Moses who met God. We have Gideon who spoke to an angel of the Lord. We also have at Sinai when all of the Israelites saw God when he came down on, on the mountain in fire and thunder and a dark cloud. They also were led by God in the desert by a pillar of cloud and fire. But nobody actually saw God in the fullness of his glory. This is because if we were to be with God and see him in the fullness of his glory, we would surely die. We know this and it's emphasized by the fact that the, the temple priests, when they went into the temple, could only approach God in pitch black darkness. There was a thick curtain that blocked out all light because if they saw God, they would die and they would actually have to be dragged out of there by a rope that was tied around their ankles. So what's David talking about when he says he wants to meet God and speak with him face to face? Well, we can see the glory of God. We can gaze upon his beauty because his beauty is his kindness and his grace and his glory. We can see the glory of God all around us. We can see it in the mighty thundering oceans. We can see it in the wisdom of the tiny insects all around us. We can see his grace and his kindness when he forgives us and heals us and helps us in our time of need. We can see his kindness when he sends the Holy Spirit to lead us and minister to our hearts 
and guide us through our time of trouble. You know, I can pray to God anywhere, at any time, but I love to go walking. When I'm walking, it seems that all of my distractions fall away and I can really focus on talking to God and I can hear his gentle whispers when he speaks to me. I love to walk because I can get away from all distractions. Another time I like to pray is when I'm on the motorbike because I'm out, I can't hear anything because the wind is rushing through my helmet and I can just talk to God. I don't know what it is about moving that really helps me. It's kind of this meditative thing where I can just tune everything out and I can talk to God. And I can tell you about so many wonderful times when I've spoken to God and poured out my frustrations to Him and He's answered me. He's spoken to me gently. He's prompted me. He's filled me with His peace and forgiveness. It is the most wonderful thing in all of the world to be in God's presence. It's the most special thing. And that presence goes with you for hours and days afterwards. And I'm not talking about some magical experience. This is just ordinary everyday moments when we share life with God and He ministers to us. You know, we can have this same relationship just like David did, where we can feel safe and secure in God's presence. I can tell you that to know God and speak with Him is the most wonderful thing you will ever experience. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's not difficult. You can speak to God as a child speaking to a loving father. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to know God. You can have a relationship with Him just like David and just like I've experienced. All you have to do is go and seek Him. And there's no one particular way that you can seek God. You know, you don't have to repeat the same things. You can do it in whatever way you want to, whatever way you feel like, whatever way you're inspired to talk to God. Just go and reach out to Him and talk to Him and get to know Him. It's not always easy to see God in the world around us, but the more we seek Him, the more we will get to know Him and the more times when we'll find ourselves comfortable in His lounge room, comfortable in His home, in His guest room, with access to God, living with Him and sharing life with Him. You know, in all of our life, the most important thing that you can do is get to know God. David knew this and he declares it in this psalm, the one thing that I seek, the one thing that I want in all of this world more than anything else is for all of my days to live in God's house and gaze on his beauty. Brothers and sisters, maybe you know what it's like to talk with God. Maybe you haven't experienced that in a long time. Maybe you've forgotten what it's like to feel his peace wash over you as he ministers to your heart, as he sends the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you. Maybe it's been a really long time since you've spoken to him and you felt him responding to you. But I want to encourage you, seek him. Seek him in whatever ways you want to. Get to know what his voice sounds like. You can do it when you're reading the Bible or when you're sitting quietly. You can do it when you're walking or when you're being still. But in all of this world, if you can find that, if you can find the Lord and you can spend time with Him, you will find that you are so secure, that you are at peace, that you are perfectly safe, that no matter what happens, even if armies were to march against you, you will not be afraid because you know that you are safe in God's loving arms. You know, God is not some force up in heaven, some power that's looking down on us in anger, he is a loving father who wants to welcome you in with his loving arms and wrap you up so that you can feel safe, just like David does in this psalm. I want to encourage you to continue giving your offerings to God during this time. It's really good for us to give to God because it reminds us that He's the one who provides for us. And it also allows your church to continue to minister to you and to spread the love of Jesus all around this world. Our bank details are up on the screen. You can give your offering by bank transfer, or if you prefer, you can bring your offering in an envelope to the church office on Tuesdays to Friday mornings. 
Alternatively, you can take your offering to the Westpac Bank yourself in person. Now let's spend some time with God in prayer. Father God, you are our place of safety. In your presence we find peace and rest. Come and be with your church as we worship you. Restore our confidence, strengthen our faith, set us free from all doubt and worry. We pray this week for our first responders and all of our frontline services as they prepare for further changes to COVID restrictions. Restore those who are weary and feeling, feeling tired at this time after long months of hard work. Support those who are feeling nervous about any future outbreaks. Please keep them and their families safe. We also pray for our business owners and workers who are anxious to reopen. Give them energy for their work and inspiration to find new ways to overcome new obstacles. Please help those who are struggling financially to get the help that they need to keep going. We think about those who are excited to get back and move around more freely. We pray that you help us to continue to be careful as we enjoy a little more freedom. And we think of those who are still feeling uncertain or vulnerable, that you bless them and be with them as they take things more slowly. Wherever we are, Whatever situation each of us is facing, we know that we are never alone because you are here with us. You are our strength and our peace. You are constant and strong through everything. We love you, Father, and we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So now to finish this time of worship, I want to encourage you to choose some songs that you might like to sing along to. You can play them on your CD player. You can pull out some hymn books, jump on the piano, or you can play them on Spotify or YouTube as well. A couple of suggestions for you this week. You might like to play In Your Hands by Hillsong Worship or Highlands, The Song of Ascent by Hillsong United. Maybe you'd like to play 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman or A Golden Oldie, A Mighty Fortress Is Our God, which is hymn number 195 in your Lutheran hymnal. I'd also like to encourage you to spend some time reflecting, maybe talking with the people around you, or you could pick up the telephone and give someone a call. Some questions you can talk about. Which words in Psalm 27 stood out to you? What do you think it would be like to visit Jesus' house? What would it be like to visit Jesus' house? And where and when have you seen or heard God lately? Where and when have you seen or heard God lately? So I'll leave it up to you to finish this time of worship on your own. Uh, you don't need to hurry off, but when you're ready, you can close with the Lord's Prayer. I also want to encourage you, if you'd like to, you can leave some comments below on YouTube or questions that you might have for us, or you can jump onto Facebook or send us an email. I also have a really exciting announcement for you this week. Beginning on the first week of July, we will be beginning to open up the Ark for public worship. In the weeks to come, we're going to continue to be providing home worship videos for those who feel sick vulnerable or unsure if they're ready to come back for large public gatherings. I really want to reassure you that we'll be continuing to provide those in the weeks to come. But for those who are ready to come back to public worship, we'll begin with two different service times at the Ark. So we'll have a traditional worship time at one o'clock each Thursday, every single week, one o'clock on the Thursday afternoon. And then we'll have a family worship time at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings as well. So I realize that these worship times are a bit different to what you might be used to, but they will allow us to continue to provide for those who are sick or vulnerable. They'll provide a warmer, safer worship time for our elderly people to come along to. And they also allow us plenty of time to clear out and to clean things in between services. We're also very aware that we don't want to overburden our staff and our volunteers, including myself. You know, many of our people are quite tired coming out of all of these COVID restrictions. They've been under a lot of extra stress and pressure. And so we don't want to overburden people and we want to ease back into our times of public worship. I really hope that these worship times will be good for you. But if they don't, I also want to encourage you that we would love to support you to continue worshiping with your small group. 
you can get a group together and you can share these worship videos and, and share that time of worship with each other. Whether you want to come into the ark, you can book a time with us or whether you want to meet in the comfort of your own homes. Um, but we're going to keep you updated on the, the circumstances and, and on our response during these times, these crazy times, when we can continue to worship God because God continues to be with us. So I'll leave that with you. It's great to see you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Peace.